When we watch TV, we're looking to unwind or escape from our daily lives. And there are some TV shows that you can dip in and out of, and there are some TV shows that you need to know every single detail and event that takes place. And there is nothing worse when the creators of these shows just scrap it all and throw it in your face. I'm Joe Hendry from What Culture, and this is 10 TV episodes that punish loyal fans. Up first, let's begin with one of our biggest offenders. This is the Armin Tamzarian incident from The Simpsons. This is from the episode The Principal and the Pauper, and Matt Groening has since said that the episode was a mistake. Harry Shearer, who voices Skinner, even went a step further to say not only did he hate the idea from the beginning, but that the writers now won't even talk about it. So why all the hate? Well, in this episode, we find out that Seymour Skinner is in fact not actually Seymour Skinner. Instead, he's Armin Tamzarian, posing as Seymour Skinner, an army veteran thought to be dead who miraculously reappears. Other writers have defended the episode, but the consensus is that they're dead wrong. Because not only was this a strange U-turn on Skinner taken, but it also completely ignores and smooths over it in future episodes, making it all a bit pointless really, and a slap in the face to the loyal fans who had invested so much in Springfield's beloved characters. Even the real Skinner being voiced by Hollywood legend Martin Sheen wasn't enough to convince us. And at one time, The Simpsons was widely regarded, and rightly so, as one of, if not the greatest TV show of all time. But many fans feel that this episode was an unfortunate sign of things to come. Up next, it's another beloved cartoon with South Park in Terence and Philip in Not Without My Anus. If there's one show that loves to remind the audience who's in charge, it's South Park. Because in this infamous prank, Stone and Parker build for an entire season towards the big reveal of who is Cartman's father. Firstly, they decided not to reveal this at the end of the first season and instead carry it over to season two, making fans wait an outrageous amount of time. But then, famously, season two, episode one, you know what's coming, the thrilling conclusion will not be shown. Instead of revealing who Cartman's father was, we were treated to Terence and Philip in Not Without My Anus, which enraged the masses and led to thousands of complaints, but still, they weren't done there. In the episode that followed, which is famously titled, Cartman's mum is still a, well, I'm not going to say it, but they didn't give us a conclusive answer. Well, instead they told us that Cartman's mum was actually Cartman's dad because she's a hermaphrodite and that somehow makes sense. So we built to this and didn't really get a rewarding answer. So thanks South Park, but we still love you. Up next, the culprit is lost and the episode is Stranger in a Strange Land, otherwise known as the one with Jack's tattoos. Lost has split audiences because it really had something going. The first season was a knockout and it was the talk of the town, but it seemed that many of the show's mysteries hadn't actually been planned out and the show became more about how can we write ourselves out of this one then. Despite having a great cast, polished production and some phenomenal dialogue, too often the show was just a series of stuff for the sake of more stuff, and there's perhaps no worse offender than Stranger in a Strange Land. The reason is because in this episode we're dragged on a quest we really didn't want to go on to find out about how Jack got his his real life tattoos. And this was reportedly developed right in the middle of when the show's creators were trying to convince ABC to set a finish date and just finish it, just kill it man, rather than drag things out for no reason. Thankfully, as a result of this episode, ABC agreed and the show picked up the pace after this, but it's fair to say that at that time, this episode was just a big fat reminder that Lost was just pumping out episodes for the sake of it, reaching at any old random thing for a story, rather than having a clear and concise direction. So, this episode did punish loyal fans, but at least it helped the show get some sense of direction. Up next, it's Buffy the Vampire Slayer, and this time with Beer Bad. Okay, so this, this is literally an anti-drinking episode, and the episode was written in a tongue-in-cheek effort in such a way so that the show could take advantage of funds being made available from the Office of National Drug Control. Wow, talk about selling out. So if the premise of the episode is to get some funding, then why just not come out and say it? Hey, beer bad, that's the way to do it, isn't it? No. Fans criticised the show for its ridiculous premise and deviating from the usual antics that they'd come to know and love, with many fans calling it the very worst episode ever. However, do not despair, it was nominated for an Emmy Award 
for outstanding hairstyling in a series. Yes. Up next, we're going old school with M.A.S.H., and this time it's Dreams. So, a wise man once told me that the key to entertainment was building trust with the audience. Build trust with the audience so that they know what to expect from you. So when they invest their precious time in watching your show, they know what reward to expect. And what the audience expected from M.A.S.H. by this point was a battle of laughs. And look, we're not saying this episode is necessarily bad, but when folks watched M.A.S.H. to chill out after a hard day, this episode didn't quite provide the comic relief that audiences wanted. This episode was a departure from the usual tomfoolery that was expected and instead removed the laugh track and became a horrifying PTSD nightmare. Up next is Breaking Bad and here there is an episode about catching a fly and you'll love it, it's called Fly. Breaking Bad is epic television and played a key role in the Netflix world domination plan. Every week we would wait in anticipation for our fix and in episode 10 of season 3 we were just slapped clean in the face face. Because if there's one criticism of this show, which I personally don't think is too much of an issue usually, it's the perceived slow pacing. And look, usually I'm all for a gradual, patient build-up of tension, but this takes the biscuit. In this episode, for a whole hour, Jesse and Walt try to kill a fly over a fear that it will taint their famous blue concoction. And after a whole hour, spoiler alert, they kill the fly. And guess what, just to slap you in the face again, another one appears. Thanks for watching. Up next, going old school once again, it's the final episode of Dallas. Earlier in the show, Bobby's death was absolutely devastating to fans, but it had produced some of the show's best moments, such as Bobby sacrificing himself to save someone he loves. Now, Dallas was groundbreaking, in the sense that prior to its arrival, most shows were neatly packeted into their own individual stories that could exist in isolation from the other episodes. But Dallas, however, required the viewer to watch intently as each episode was released to watch the stories unfold over a longer period of time. And guess what? It was all a dream. Because they regretted killing off Bobby, they decided that that whole incident was just one big fat dream. And not only was the character written back in, but the entire year's events had to be written off completely as a dream, making the last series of viewing a completely pointless waste of time so loyal fans enjoy that slap in the face. Up next, it's Community with an advanced introduction to finality. The fourth season of Community was without the show creator Dan Harmon and its shows with a noticeable dip in quality, but this particular episode is widely regarded as a huge pile of nonsense with multiple timelines crossing over, characters firing teleportation paintballs at each other in a show that's really just supposed to be about the trials and tribulations of college. Not only that, but spoiler alert, the whole it was all a dream scenario that we just talked about in the previous entry is the, exactly the type of nonsense that we would expect community to satirise, but here they used it seriously. At the time, fans were left hanging that this could have been how the show ended, adding to that uncomfortable feeling that they just wasted their time. Up next, it's Star Trek The Next Generation with Shades of Grey. So in this episode, instead of getting the usual Star Trek formula that fans know and love, we instead got Commander Riker struck by a poisonous thorn and infected with a life-threatening virus. Well, that sounds interesting, but wait. Oh, here we are. Only through reliving past memories can he return to consciousness. Translation, let's have a pointless clip show with almost no new content. Why, you ask? Well, Star Trek Next Generation had overspent on several previous episodes and Paramount Pictures were keen to hold the creators to the original budget. As a result, show creators came up with the idea of reusing old content to meet the episode count without spending any extra money. And fans won't even notice, right? Well, they did notice. And them, along with the critics, noticed. And they weren't happy with the consensus being that this is the worst episode of the series ever. And finally, our last entry for the day. This one is from How I Met Your Mother. And this is a huge spoiler alert because if you haven't watched the show to the end, you probably don't want to hear this. So I'm giving you a few seconds to leave now. Okay, here we go. This is from Last Forever. In the words of Rob Van Dam, the whole effing show was about finding out who the mother was. And the answer? Well, Ted meets her, had kids, she dies, and he goes back to Robin. 
What? That is the whole payoff for the show? He goes back to Robin? Even though neither of them are really happy with each other? Even though Ted now has the kids he wants, Robin was just never really that into Ted. So the moral of the story, of this long story, is if you can't find what you're looking for, just settle. Settle for someone you love but doesn't really love you back and just recite yourself to a future of lies, resentment and as a result inevitable affairs. That was the moral of that story. Enjoy! We hope you've enjoyed this video. Please make sure that you like, share and subscribe and leave us some comments below. Also make sure that you follow us on Twitter here and make sure you go to whatculture.com for all your favourite news, reviews and features. We hope you've enjoyed this video and we shall see you next time.